In this video, we're going to discuss the game design document or GDD and why they're important. Whether you're new to game making or a seasoned veteran of multiple game making softwares, a simple hobbyist like me, or an aspiring indie developer, you will benefit from creating a game design document and maintaining it throughout the course of your project. So what is a game design document? Maybe you've seen them before, or maybe this is your first time you've heard of them. Basically, a game design document is a blueprint for your game. It's a written plan that communicates the intentions of the game, the ideas, the mechanics, the story, and all the brilliant ideas you're going to come up with along the way and ultimately lose if you don't write them down. A game design document helps you communicate to others the vision for your game, whether that be team members or maybe publishers down the road. It serves as a reference while developing your game to ensure that you stay on track and focus on the original vision for the game. There's a term called scope creep, which means basically that you start out with one idea and then you add to it and you add to it until eventually it balloons out of proportion and loses all sense of coherence and control. This document will help you avoid that. Some other benefits come later in the form of marketing or promotion, maybe legal or intellectual property considerations. The point is, this document is often called a game bible for a reason, and nearly every game you've ever played has had one, so yours probably should too. Alright, so now that you're hopefully convinced of its worth, let's talk about how to write one. The fact is there's no right way to write a game design document. If you Google search right now, I'm sure you'd come up with a bunch of different templates that you might use to get started. Ultimately, this document serves you, not the other way around. So you want this document to conform to your needs and change and fit your project. But some basic components of the game design document include an overview of the game. So in this section, you're going to describe the game at a high level, what is the genre, the theme, the main idea of the story, some key characters, what makes your game unique, interesting, and fun. The target audience, not all games are for everyone. Often when we make a game, we're trying to express a certain idea and have a specific audience in mind. So write that down. Who do you think is gonna be interested in playing your game and why? Game mechanics. It can be very easy to get carried away with game mechanics, but if you don't, if you stop and analyze your, some of your favorite games and best games out there, you'll quickly realize that the mechanics are pretty consistent, even if they take on variations. So understanding the core mechanics of your game will provide you with some guide rails, to keep the game easy to learn and fun to play. Then you can explore variations of the, those mechanics and introduce complexity and challenge along the way. Level design. In some cases, it may be a good strategy to plan out your levels in advance. This can help in a variety of ways, depending on the genre and the type of game you're making. It can affect the coherence and the continuity of the story, or it can aid in the progression of challenge, for example. Characters. Crafting a compelling story is impossible without including some interesting and relatable characters. If your player doesn't care about your character, they're not likely to become immersed in the game and may simply stop playing. So get to know your characters and then introduce them in a creative way. Story and narrative. Along with being set designers, concept artists, game mechanic designers, writers, directors, sometimes musicians, a whole host of other skills. One of the most important skills an indie developer can have is storytelling. Creating interesting dynamics, story arcs, roles, relationships is all part of what makes the experience of playing a game memorable and enjoyable. So write it down. Art and visual style. You may need to engage with other team members like I mentioned before, whether they be like friends of yours or paid resources. Either way, you're gonna need to make sure that everybody's on the same page and understands the vision that you have in mind for your game. So describing scenes and art styles in a descriptive and detailed way ensures the whole team understands what you're going for. And even if you plan to do the entire project alone, Writing this sort of thing down keeps you on point and consistent. This also goes for audio, music, UI, really anything that the player is going to interact with in your game. Game progression and balance. It's one thing to come up with a fun and compelling story. It's quite another to carefully craft a fun, challenging, balanced progression system in a game. For example, if your player, if your player character levels up, how does that affect their abilities? 
What about the economy? Will the game feel as challenging and rewarding at level 1 as it will at level 100? My advice here is to study the masters. We are blessed with a wealth of examples, both good and bad, in all genres and all game styles. So go play some of them and pay attention to what worked well and what didn't. And, you know, write that down. Testing and quality assurance. You should obviously play test your game throughout the course of its development. That goes without saying. But it might be a good idea to think about how you're going to plan to test the game once it's finished. You really can't be an objective tester at that point because you're simply too close to it. You've played it a million times. You know the mechanics inside and out and all the secrets. It just won't work. So think about how you plan to test this game fairly. One way to do this is to create test plans throughout the development process and then pass those along to your testers once you get to that stage. There's probably a lot more you can include in a document like this. Like I said in the beginning, this document is there to serve you, not the other way around. So make it something that helps you and your project, not something that takes away from the valuable development time or becomes tedious chore that you must do. Some game design documents are a page long, others are a hundred. So there's no right length or amount of detail other than what, you know, that which serves you to, and puts you in the best position to create a game of your dreams. Good luck, and I can't wait to play your game. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything new, by all means, uh, click the like button below. That really helps me out. And uh, if you're new here or if you just haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to have you stay around. Click the subscribe button below. And thanks for watching all the way through. I, I really do appreciate every everybody that's joined us. And I can't wait to make more videos for you. Thank you.